Hey, how's it going guys? I've been looking forward to this. This is Walmart's Family Mobile TCL A3 smartphone that's available for around $40 at Walmart. Now, there are a lot of, a lot of cheap smartphones. What makes this so special? Well, first and foremost, it has three gigabytes of RAM. That's right, three gigs of RAM on a $39, $40 smartphone. That's pretty interesting. You get to see the plans that Walmart offers here. And I'm just gonna say that the, these plan, this plan is not that great. Honestly, if you're going for something unlimited, I would recommend checking out Mint Mobile. Uh, I'll have a link down below for it. I'm not sponsored, sponsored with them or affiliated with them in any way, but I definitely recommend them because I've been using them for the past year and they've improved dramatically. I think they're pretty good and they're cheaper. So, but I, get, I digress. Let's get back to this. In the box, there's a start guide, a user manual underneath that. Smartphone feels pretty thin and light. That's because there's no battery I just figured out. And here is the battery. So the battery is only 3,000 milliamp hours, which isn't much. There's a back cover here. Another quick start guide. There's a lot of start guides here. Um, not sure what this is. Terms and conditions, okay. Charge this, you're gonna use a market USB cable and a wall outlet. It's just five volts, one amp. So no fast charging there. The back has this textured kind of finish. It's just hard plastic. Um, starting from the right, there's the volume keys, power button, power button's right underneath. On top, I believe, is a microphone, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And by the way, on, on the back is the camera, the rear camera, and a flash underneath that. It's kind of small. On the left side is this Google Assistant button. I wonder if you can change it to something else. You can open this up and underneath is the SIM tray and micro SD card slot. Underneath is the speaker grills and a micro USB to recharge the phone. Now I don't know if they emit from both sides. I'm honestly not expecting it. If anything, I guess it's located on the side instead of the back, so that's fine. And then on the front is the speaker grill, LED indicator next to the front camera. Off the bat, just connecting to Wi-Fi, it looks like there's a little system update. I don't think it's gonna change it to anything new besides maybe some security updates. Face unlock is available on this phone. And out of the box, there's 21 gigs free, which I think is more than enough for the price. I feel like I'm gonna mention that every other minute. Like, oh, it's great for the price. It's worth it for the price. <laughs> but we'll go through everything and see it. I did download stuff, so that's why I had a screenshot for everything. I went outside to take some pictures and the pictures just seem over sharpened. Not really good at all. I can try to post this on Reddit or somewhere. The front camera isn't that much better either. It looks like it's not really well suited for indoors. I mean, outdoors is really when you'll get the best picture or best shot. You can still read Canon, EOS on the side. And even in here, you can read everything that's inside the lens. So this is a little better than expected. You can watch videos at 1080p, even though the screen is uh, something like less than 1080. I can't remember the exact one at the moment. And uh, the speaker is just terrible. It's just tinny on the side and it only emits from one side. So, fortunately, you won't be able to watch videos at full HD 1080p on streaming services like Netflix and Hulu because it has a widevine security of L3. Having a widevine security of L3 will cap you at 480p for Netflix and other streaming services. One place where it does a pretty decent job or better than expected is in performance. Um, besides the Geekbench score, which I'll show in just a moment, has a CPU of an ARM MT6762 and a GPU of PowerVR Rogue GE8320. Now these are similar specs you might see or hear on $100 tablets or $120 tablets. And this is a $40 smartphone, much cheaper and performance is actually decent, despite what you might see in the benchmark performances. Now, the compute score I couldn't figure out because it kept crashing when I tried it, so I'm not gonna waste my time on it, um, but the regular CPU score got usually around 140 to 850, and that's not high or anything. It's more than sufficient to do basic tasks. So I really don't notice too many issues just browsing the web, doing regular web browsing. Uh, maybe zooming in, there's a bit of a delay, a little longer than expected. And you can also uh, have multi-split screen function on, and it seems to work okay. You'll definitely notice um, hiccups here and there, and it won't be as smooth, just like what you saw there when I just moved around. So there's that, but it, it does work. 
And also, when you're on YouTube watching a video, there is a mini player that shows up on the bottom, so if you want to go ahead and browse the web or do something else, you can still have your video running down there. First game here is Old School RuneScape. And this seems to work pretty well. No major issues here or there. I really don't notice too many frame rate drops or anything, which is a great sign. But this is an old game, and I guess it is compatible with uh, low-end devices, so take that how you will. Next game is COD Mobile. This is another well-optimized game for low-end devices. Alright, looks like there's someone there. Next game here is Roblox, and this seems kind of choppy, not really that smooth, so I wouldn't say it's playable. So this can't handle high-end games or 3D graphic intense games, even though Roblox really isn't that demanding, but I think it can handle some form of gaming. I mean, case in point is the first two games we saw, so it can definitely handle some gaming, just not high-end. Lastly, I had to make a quick phone call. Obviously, this is a phone, so I wanted to see how the speakerphone is and everything. And overall, it seems like it's pretty well. And call quality was fine. Granted, it was on Wi-Fi, but the speakerphone was okay. Um, didn't really notice any problems, except for maybe when the volume is at full. There, the volume or the yeah, the volume kind of leaks out. This or the sound does. So that's just one thing to keep in mind don't have it at full blast if you want to have private conversations. Uh, besides that, overall this seems like a great choice to pick up, especially at the time of this video, which is going for about $40. Uh, I'll have a link down below for it. Let me know what you guys think, and if you do want to see an update video, uh, I might make this. Uh, I might use this as my daily driver if there's enough interest, but I just need to know down below in the comments, or at least if there's enough likes. So anyways guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.